was that awesome or what? There's nothing like a drone to bring out the inner child in us surveyors, right? So today, it's drones and data. Roll intro. <laughs> Drone is easy to fly because this thing's not. Drones and data. Shit. Okay, that was fun. That thing's about half crazy, isn't it? Okay, so what I've got here is a point cloud that was uh, created from from uh, an MD Mapper 1000 DG with an Aplanix APX-15 and a Sony RX1RII 42.4 megapixel camera. It also has a 35 millimeter fixed Zeiss lens. Okay, so I wasn't there when they collected the data, but I did the webinar for the client. So I had the data set. So I had the client's data uh, he went out and surveyed it, and I have the point cloud information, and I have all the points that he shot. So let's bring in um, his CSV file, and let's see what that looks like compared to the point cloud. So this point cloud is incredible. It's about 583 million points, I believe. So, um, okay, so for those of you not familiar with bringing in points in the business center, first thing I'm going to do is pick northern easting elevation, and I'm going to say import. So it's going to bring these points in. There's the points. I'm going to turn off the point IDs and the point symbols, and we're just going to show elevation, okay? So let's zoom down here and take a look at this parking lot. Now, one of the things I want you to notice about this parking lot is that this is a point cloud, not a photograph. So I think it is just crazy how detailed this thing is, um, how I can actually see the cracks in the concrete and the, um, I guess these are like rail lines or something where they've been taking um, this, this material, whatever this material is. I think this is like a lumber mill or something. So maybe like two by fours or something in and out. But uh, isn't that crazy, the level of detail that there is there? Okay, so the important thing we want to know is how well does the surveyor shot compare to the, um, the MD mapper? So one interesting thing to note is that these were both done independently of each other. The surveyor collected the data with his GPS unit, and then the MD mapper was collected with its own unit. So... Um, Two separate GPS units were used, um, in theory, both on the same data, but they were, were collected independent of each other. So let's go and um, let's drill down here and look at some of these elevations and see what they look like. So if I go up here to measure point, I can click right there. It says 4840. So 48.35, that's 500. That's not surprising. A um, lot of drones are capable of creating that type information. So the level of detail is probably what really gets me on this. Um, we're probably going to see, you know, a deviation of a tenth or two, I would suspect. Uh, that one's about 400, five if you want to round it. And I would say 500 is probably about average to what you're going to see, especially on a hard surface. Uh, 4830, 4826, 400s, depending on how you want to look at it. I think I saw some that were a little off down here in this parking lot. Let's look at those. There's a point pretty close right there. 4883. Is that what that says? 
Yep, 83. So, what's that? About 1500s. So, that is kind of what I was expecting. Like I said, 1500s to two tenths. Isn't too surprising, surprising me. 4611, 4611. That one's right on the money. So, you can see um, that. Um, the points, I mean, it all looks pretty good as far as that goes. What really amazes me is the accuracy, the horizontal accuracy of the data is what really got me. Uh, that and the clarity of the photo, or the uh, point cloud, I keep wanting to call it a photo. Uh, it's just, to me, look at the back end of this truck back here. I mean, that level of detail to me is just insane. Um, we can go to a, um, a 3D view real quick. And you can see kind of what you're getting here. And of course, with the um, look at that roof, isn't it insane? The um, the I think that the cool thing of the this whole thing is being able to draw lines and take it out to CAD. So we'll do that here in just a second. But um, one of the things I might want to mention is that you'll notice with the drone, you're getting the top and not the sides. This is where an SX10 would really come in. And you guys know an SX10 is like one of my favorite toys. But I would say drone data combined with SX10 data would be phenomenal. Let's go in here. Let's try to draw a couple lines real quick. I just kind of want to show you guys what you can do. So uh, if I go up here to CAD and I go to line string, um, we'll call it road, layer, we'll say new layer. Um, Let's say my new layer is going to be road and I'm going to make that red and line way I think we pick it up a little bit I wonder what that'll look like so um, one of the things that we've got here is oh snap so I can do I can turn all this other stuff off so now I just have point so I can click, yikes, that wasn't what I intended to do. Clear selection, uh, got all this done, forgot, I gotta hit okay. So if I click right there, let's just kind of try to grab some points around here. Um, Yeah, I would probably try to kind of segment this data out some. Oh, I don't know. What looks good to you guys? Just kind of go across here. I'm just going to randomly select some lines just so I can show you what happens when we bring this over into AutoCAD. Oh, I don't know. Looks like I probably should have went up this way. I don't know what's going on there. I'm probably landing in trees when I'm doing that. Edge of concrete. Oh, I don't know. We'll just call that good, okay? So there's my line. Huh, oh, I guess the line type up selected was a dashed line so um so there that is so now if i want to take this to autocad all i gotta do is go to home export dwg um i can call it drone project dwg let's see where it's going to land um drone project save i can send out as 2018 if i want to u.s survey foot export Okay, so I'm going to close this because we're going to look at some other stuff here. So let's find Civil 3D. And of course it opens on the other screen. OK, 
Come on. Come on. You can do it. There you go. Okay. So, um, I can open. And, of course, it's over here somewhere. Drone project. Drone project. Yep. Let's uh, get rid of the grid. Zoom. Enter. Still thinking. Stance. There's a road. So that was the line that I drew in Trimble Business Center. So if I want to, remember I said I thought I got some trees and stuff in there? Yeah, I got something in there. Yeah, that's not too bad. Nah, that's not bad at all, actually. Actually, it looks pretty good. Okay, so now then, one of the things you get from a drone is you get an, uh, an image, an ortho rectified image. So what happens is in the software, like with UAS Master is, it actually creates a point cloud, then it actually creates the ortho from that. It's interesting, isn't it? You'd think it would go the other way. So a lot of guys try to bring in um, aerial photograph into Civil 3D and they, they struggle with it, okay? So I'm going to show you guys how I bring in I say I'm going to, if I can get this to pull up. You guys remember my Geo Viewer that I used in that last video I did on background images. So we're going to use it again. I'm going to go to File, Add Local Layer. What we're going to see is, if I say All Files, when we go down here, there is a mosaic TIFF that is 7.3 gigs. 7.3 gigs is not coming into Civil 3D, okay? That's just too much. So what we're going to do, we're going to use this free little software. Um, so it's coming in Louisiana South, so it's georeferenced. That's awesome. Um, this big image, I have to zoom out and zoom in to get it to come in. So here's our image. So now what I need to do is I need to shrink it. Now there's a couple different ways to do that. I can shrink it by changing my resolution or I can compress it. So compressing it, you need something that will create a SID file. So uh, you need software that's probably gonna cost you $3,200 or something like that. It's about average from what I've seen on something to compress a SID. I mean, you guys may know some software that, uh, maybe some free software do it. If so, share it in this video so other people can see it. So as far as I know, this is the best way to do it. So tools, I'm gonna go to export, I'm gonna go to map. So I'm gonna export a GeoTIFF, I'm gonna write a world file, and here's my resolution. Right now it says it's 15.14 megs. We know we can get a little bit more out of Civil 3D than that. What if I do a 0.1, and it says now it's 1.88 gigs, so it's about almost two gigs of data. So Civil 3D can handle that. So we are going to send it here, and I think I already have one, so I'm gonna call this two. I'm gonna say export. Let's close that. Let's close this. No, I don't wanna save it. So now then, um, here's the line work that I created, but you know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to uh, open up another drawing, and this is the surveyor's drawing that he created. So let's look at it. So here's what, um, this is what he has created. Now I wanna show you a little trick here. If I go into drawing utilities, and I go in and I look at drawing settings, what I'm going to see as it opens on the other screen is it's set to US survey foot. Now that's where we want it. We want it US survey foot, but there's a trick here. You can see it's set up on state plane, blah, blah, blah. It's in the correct zone. Everything's good, right? I'm gonna say, okay. Now then, I am going to insert this and this is going to come in wrong, but let me show you. you the command you use is M-A-P-I insert. Map insert, okay? So we call this thing UAS Master 
if two was the one I just created, I'm going to say OK. And there again, it comes in out of the screen. Now then, what you're going to see is, what's happening is, it's coming in the wrong place. You can't see it behind the points. So uh, what it's doing is, if you look down here where it says units, it's coming in as inches. Now, that's not what we want. We want feet. If I go to insertion and look, you'll see that this scale is blown. So if I was to go ahead and bring this in, it's not only is it not going to bring it in the right place, it's not going to bring it at the right scale. So let's cancel this. Do I want to cancel? Yes. What you need to do, and here's the little trick, so you don't have to rubber sheet it or anything. Drawing utilities, go to units. And everything open over there. So it says U.S. survey feet, which is where you think it would be. This is, um, this is insertion scale. So we had the same problem with bringing point clouds in um, into AutoCAD, if you'll remember in that video I did. I was, it was kind of new to me about what the issue was, so I was a little confused. Now I know to watch for it. So now if I go in and I say feet and I say OK, now I'm going to go back in. I'm going to say map insert. I'm going to go pick that same file. And there she is. She loaded in the background. You'll notice now my units, my units say feet. I'm going to say OK. So now we have the surveyor's information in the background. So if I say display order, send the back. So I sent the drawing to the back. Now, if you wonder whether or not this image is close or not, look at that. That is the, um, the line that was drawn from the shots uh, on the back of, the, um, back of that, those wing balls. I think that right there is a telling uh, that, that this thing ties pretty good. And then when you get down, um, was it, I think it was down here maybe. I was looking at, where was it? Maybe it was right there. I was looking at these shots. So you'll notice we're hitting the edge of the rail instead of the center of the rail. I'm sure the shots were probably on the center of the rail. Um, so we're, what, 2,500s across on the rail. So we're 10s, 1,500s off. That could have been a GPS base station not level. It could have been... The surveyor didn't have the rod plumb. It could be the rods out of plumb. There's about a hundred different reasons why that could have missed. So that just kind of give you an idea that I'd probably go with the surveyor's rod probably wasn't plumb. He was probably just taking shots and rolling. So um, a lot of ground shots out there. But for the most part, if you look, there's a drainage grate. Isn't it crazy? The uh, the level of detail. You don't see something nuts. Look at this. You want to count the poles that are laying out there that they're making timber out of. It's insane. But I just wanted to show you guys um, how to bring in this data and what you could do with it. Um, you know, there's some things that you can't get from a drone. Uh, for instance, this would be a good example. Um, maybe you know if you look at the time that it was taken to uh, shoot in these edge asphalt shots and this edge of road, uh, I think the drone could have saved an enormous amount of time in the field collecting all this information that's in here. Um, could have even picked up more information. There's roads and stuff in there that, that, that could have just added to the drawing that would have made it look better. Um, so, you know, the, the level of detail on this to me is, is pretty good. If you look at that, it's right on that edge right there. Um, what were we looking a minute ago? We were drawing those lines in here. Actually, you know what? Let's do this real quick. Insert. Browse. Man, everything's open on this other screen. Um, So this was under drone project, I believe. Drone project, open. Uh, okay. So there was that line I drew a second ago. Just kind of snapping down through there. 
Not bad, considering I was just kind of like pick, 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 going up through there. But you can see that this thing come in georeference. So um, image is insane. There again, the image and the point cloud to me look just almost alike. Um, the, the level of detail that you've got in the um, in the point cloud, you could just do anything you want to with it. Combine that with an SX10, I think you could get a lot done. Uh, I think it could be quite amazing. So anyways, um, I really like to thank uh, Matt uh, Rosenbaum with um, Microdrone. Uh, they actually process the data. Um, so, and they sent it to me so I could do the demo, uh, the, the webinar online. Um, also Ross Kinney with NEI, he was the one out there on site that actually, I think him and Matt actually might've been the two that flew this. I'm not positive Matt was there, but I think he was. Um, I know Ross was. Uh, also uh, the surveyor, which I don't know if he wants me to mention his name, but he's a really good friend of mine. Um, super helpful to me on some of the stuff that I've been doing. So, um, and also, last but not least, by any means, is uh, NEI and William Poche because William is the one that facilitated all this and let it, you know, made everything happen. So, I really like a big shout out to him um, for um, getting. We didn't we didn't own the DG system. We have a lidar system, so we actually had to get that from Microdrone to be able to do this. So, and William pulled all that together so we could do this demo for the client. So. Um, just a big shout out. Thanks to everybody that was involved that helped. Uh, I just want to show you guys some of this data and some of the possibilities. Um, I think that this is probably some of the best drone data that I've seen, especially considering this was not something that was georeferenced from ground control. This was taken with a 42 megapixel camera um, and then processed. And the level of, and this is a photograph. This point cloud came from a photograph. This didn't come from LIDAR. This came from a photograph. So keep that in mind when you're looking at this. Um, I think that, um, I think this really is pretty impressive to me. So anyways, guys, um, like and subscribe. Uh, I got some more stuff coming out. I got my office finished. Um, so hopefully I'll be able to crank out some more videos. I've got a couple of things I really try to need to get done pretty quick and get out there for you guys, but, um, like, and subscribe and, uh, as always be safe out there and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.